Hey guys, welcome to a new episode today. So it's you, your host here, Miles Gisheru. Welcome back to a new segment today. Today we're going to be discussing a very important topic. I hope you have been seeing around the world what has been happening. There's a climate crisis that has been happening in the world right now. And today I have a very good friend of mine as my guest. And he's going to be talking about environmental conservation and our involvement as the youth in environmental conservation. His name goes by Mr. Collins Lugongo. He's a very good friend of mine. I'll let him introduce himself and let us know what he does. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Miles. Uh, my name is Collins, as you've said. And Lugongo is my surname. And basically, I'm a passionate environmentalist and a conservationist and also a climate activist, as you noted. So basically, that is my field. And I'm very happy today to be here, to be hosted by Miles Show. Uh, so just maybe to get more uh, on my profile, I'm a graduate in environmental planning and management. And you can see how passion has come and even that is my professional life. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you too. Because I actually I remember the time that you went buying uh, trees and you used to tell me the names yes. of the trees and the <laughs> specifications. Like yes. that was quite amazing. And I know that you're very passionate about it. And I'm actually glad that you're here so that you can direct us as the youth what we can do yes. in terms of environmental conservation because it's actually, uh, the climate is at very much risk and we need to step up and take care of the environment at large. Yes. All right, so let's just start with the most, uh, the most important and you know, what people always ask, what is environmental conservation? Thank you for that question. In most of the times you find that uh, people see it as maybe a big uh, vocab uh, vocabulary you know, concept, but in most of the cases it's a very simple concept that everyone needs to understand. Uh, environmental conservation should be defined or maybe described in only uh, using three keywords preservation, protection, and management of our natural resources. Because uh, when we talk about conservation, we look at the natural resources that the, the environment gives us, what the world provides and what the planet gives. So basically, we are talking about preservation, protection, and management of these resources. And most of the times, these resources, we look at water, we look at forests, we look at wildlife, or wild animals and plants, and our soils and rocks as well as our climate. Yeah. So basically, we're doing that conservation of the resources so that we can have, we can secure our future, uh, so that we can have our generations to come, the children of maybe my, my children and yours, may have a better place to live uh, when our time comes. So we are not here to stay for a long time. Our time will come, our time will go, then their time will come. So they need to get those resources as well and use them. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Just to bring you back to what you told me, like as you introduced yourself, you said about how passion has drove you to do this. Yes. And actually from how you've defined environmental conservation, I've noticed that you're very passionate about it. Okay. So I'll also ask you like, uh, why did you decide to do this? Why did you choose environmental conservation to be an environmentalist? Great. So let me start from uh, where everything started from. When I was still young, maybe in my uh, back in my primary school life, uh, I was very active in the uh, community engagement in the school because I was one of the scout members, actually a leader. So I used to see how people cut down trees and we also used to be taught more stories on uh, conservation about Wangari Madai and all that. So from there, I used to also have that appetite. Like I can plant a tree just as someone can plant a crop and you see it grow and maybe benefit the, the, the family. So my passion was driven from the fact that I was seeing a lot of destruction whereby people are just cutting down trees, maybe to make charcoal and maybe build houses and all do that. But they were not replacing. So we used to do a number of tree planting activities in our schools. And another motivation came from one of my primary teachers who used to, like, every rain season we used to plant trees in the school. So I think I brought a lot of uh, practice and all those concepts into my mind. Then because I was uh, part of the scout team, uh, we used to 
go outside, we used to do a lot of community work, we used to go and maybe do cleanups outside. So all these things used to, to, to open my future and they used to, to show me what environmental conservation was all about. Because we were doing everything that we were doing at that time, it was based on conservation. Then when back into my high school, I really loved geography and it is one of my best, it used to be one of my best subjects and today it is my best field as well because it's the subject that talks about uh, all our natural resources, talk of the rocks, the forests, and the wildlife, all that, the physical and the human geography. So I used to love that from, from the school life, from what was happening in the community and that gave me and strengthened my passion. To a level that uh, when I was going to the campus, that was in 2013. Uh, I remember very well my parents wanted me to pursue something to do with education, but I was very adamant and I told them I'm just going to pursue what my passion tells me. And this is the environment and this is where we are today. And I look forward to being one of the great people in the environmental field, yeah, as time goes. And I'm sure you will. Because I've actually remembered, I've actually remembered that uh, you actually did some tree planting yes. in uh, in your community, of which you, you teach young kids yes. about it. So, yeah, step at a time, and I'm sure because I've seen and when I know so many people have seen, even in the community, they have seen what you've done, especially when it comes to advocating tree planting because it is, uh, you know, it's networking with the rain. Eh? True. They, so yeah. yeah, so I've seen it because, like you, you were telling me earlier that right now, as we have seen in Nairobi, there is very little rain yeah. compared to you know in like areas of you know western those far away from you know from Nairobi, mm -hmm. also like in those where they say rural areas, rural areas, the weather is even cooler there because they have trees, but in Nairobi it's quite hot right now. And the reason is because you see in Nairobi. I usually try to maybe go to a raised building and I can see the whole of, like you can be able to see the whole of my road. You find that uh, it's really populated with a lot of buildings and no trees or not vegetation. And that's the reason why sometimes we rarely receive rain from the neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. That I agree with you, especially even in Tika Road, mm -hmm. super high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got the, we got the road. But you have yeah, no trees. We don't have trees. We don't have uh, green vegetation. Yeah. Uh, that you find that because if you go on the other far side, like the Kiambu regions, you go to Gong, usually rains are there at some time. But on this side, it's total trouble. Mm. So that means we need to do something. As youth on this side, because uh, these areas are usually dominated by youth, we need to have programs, we need to come up with projects that can help us and maybe secure the environment of this region. Yes. All right. So I'm um, still on conservation. I've also just remembered there's something here. Yeah? Uh, what are the types of conservations that are there that the youth can get themselves involved in? Okay. So to be just simple on that, we, 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 we need to understand that we have various types of conservation. Uh, talking of forest conservation, whereby we try to conserve our trees, our natural trees, our indigenous trees in those forests, Karura and all the other, it's a type of conservation. When we also conserve the marine life, uh, the marine ecosystem, the oceans and uh, the seas, all that is also a type of conservation. When we do the private kind of conservation, like the national museums and all that, it's also a type of conservation. But now these, they have been categorized into two major types. We have the in situ and the ex situ conservation. So when you talk about uh, the parks, the national parks, when you talk about the, those natural ecosystems, natural uh, forests and all that, they fall, uh, they fall under the in situ conservation. Then when you talk about the ex situ conservation, these are conservation uh, outside the natural environment. So the, 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 the basic thing here to understand is that in situ conservation takes place, it's a kind of conservation that takes place in the natural environment where that biodiversity exists. Then when you talk about ex situ, it's that conservation that takes place outside the natural. Like for example, if you go to the animal orphanage, the zoos and the botanical gardens, those are conservations being done outside there 
natural ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So basically that, uh, that is how we can get the difference between the two types, two major types of conservation, the in situ and the ex situ conservation. Ah, okay, yes. okay, that's fantastic. Personally, I've learned something new. <laughs> Great to I, for me, I thought I just knew about, you know, uh, there is, uh, for me, I thought I knew there's only a wildlife conservation, you know, uh, tree Trees. conversation, you know, uh, <laughs> conservation. Yes. You know, I thought it was just, you know, but I didn't know it's in depth, you know. Yeah. I didn't know it was that in depth, but thank you for clarifying for that. Yes. And then now let's talk about that youth or even that young child who wants to start talking about or start trying to get involved in environmental conservation yeah yes how should the youth and that and the young ones yeah because they're also the, they are the future leaders of tomorrow yes. how should they get involved in conservation what do you think someone should do like just them as an individual like for example me as miles if i want to start doing environmental conservation what yes. should i do okay the basic uh, element that all of us need to understand and basically the public. We need to understand that uh, we are not, as youth, we are not supposed to be involved in conservation. Okay, we are, but at another level, we ourselves, we need to get ourselves involved in conservation. Because uh, conservation has, it's a very sensitive area. You mess up with uh, the resources, then you get going to get the uh, irreversible effects. We are going to be hit hard by those effects of uh, maybe climate change, uh, like flooding, droughts, and all that. So the basic thing is that how do we get involved or how do we get ourselves involved uh, into conservation? So maybe I'll talk from the perspective of maybe being, uh, let's say, being helped. Maybe I may, I may refer this maybe to the government or, or any other uh, agency. Uh, for example, the organizations, they need to have what we call the youth programs. Like every organization, in every corporate, uh, in the corporate industry, they usually have what we call a youth program. So you find that maybe the program is being led by a youth, uh, and maybe this, this program does a lot of things, projects and activities, bringing youth together. Another element is on what we call capacity building and empowerment. You find that most of the times uh, youth are there, we've gone to school, we've done all we can, we've secured and maybe even awarded the certificates, but maybe we want to further into conservation studies. So the basic thing is supporting that youth, maybe giving a scholarship, maybe giving the resources so that we can maybe get more on what we want. For example, if I want to be a climate change expert today, maybe I don't have the resources. For me to get involved in it, I'll need maybe to be assisted by someone else. So that kind of assistance is also very important. Then we have representation. Talking about uh, the Youth Council on Climate Change, uh, we, they are supposed to be, to, we need, like the government needs to have those positions. They need to have those spaces for the youth. They need to have the sectors being led by youth so that we can raise our voices because we usually have the concepts, we usually have the ideas and minds, but if we are not well represented, then something wrong happens. You find that we may have all the youth startups that we want to do, but we may not get involved into conservation because we are just lacking a representation. So the youth need to be given a representation, a proper representation, a proper participation uh, in environmental matters. For instance, when you talk about uh, conservation of our forests, you find that we are the people who can run up and down to plant trees, we are the people who can run up and down to create awareness, but if we are not given that chance, if we are not given that representation, then it becomes a problem. So for us to get involved, first of all, it is ourselves to push ourselves and start doing something that aligns to the conservation. Can we come up with uh, projects? Can we come up with activities uh, that we can do? And maybe also, as someone comes to do capacity building for us, at least we are at another level so that we don't just seem like we want everything to be done for us. So the best involvement is to start with ourselves. Then the second one is to be supported. Yeah. Uh, and maybe just uh, on the point of representation, I may mention the COP26. COP26, COP is a conference of parties. Uh, these, are, these are basically the 
environmental climate change dialogues and conversations that happen every year. So COP26 uh, is going to take place in, uh, in UK and uh, that will be in November this year. So basically we are having a group of youth from Kenya, from different sectors, from different uh, lines of conservation that are going to, 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 to attend and maybe give their views and maybe raise their voices and also participate in that uh, climate change uh, dialogues and conversations. So those are some of the things that we can use to involve ourselves into conservation. And we also need to learn a lot. We also need to be visiting environmental places like we need even ourselves to be just going to the parks and see what happens. How do these animals uh, survive here? We need to learn about them and everything of the sort. So basically those are some of the ways that maybe we can get ourselves to, uh, involved in conservation matters. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Very fantastic. Uh, as you were talking about how you know animals tend, to, how they are able to survive yes. in the environment, you know, I've uh, just even thought about it. Right now, you're seeing so many cases of wildfires, you know, yes. floodings, you know, uh, drought. You know, even drought, especially in our country, has been has been there for a very long time. Yes. So when it comes to when it comes to you know, uh, do you think that the environment has a chance to survive? Best, I'll refer this on the climate crisis uh, problem that we have today. We only have like, uh, let me say, uh, this is 2021, almost 2022, like eight years and a few months to save our planet because uh, Vision 2030, in terms of the environmental goals and promises, if we are not going to achieve them, in Kenya, then we are going to face the impacts. Secondly, uh, globally, if we don't reverse the effects, the negative effects of climate change, then it means that our environment is at risk. So the thing is, the point is, yes, we still have a chance. The environment still has a chance to survive. Only if we are going to, to meet uh, what we call the nationally determined contributions when we talk about climate change. Like the promises we are giving, like we are going to green the world, we are going to, to provide uh, renewable sources of energy, we are going to have alternatives to the problems that the, 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 the environment is facing. If we are going to implement that by 2030, then at least we are assured of the environment survival. But we are having maybe long uh, terms like giving us uh, like saying the environment, like we are going to do one, two, three by 2050. So if you give us a timeline of 2050, it means that our environment is at risk. So the point is, the environment still has a chance to survive only if we are going to do the right thing by 2030. Because when you talk about the global temperatures, the global temperatures right now, they are above 1.5 degrees Celsius, and they are supposed to be below 1.5. So if they are above, it means we are going to have increased uh, increased flooding, uh, droughts, as you mentioned, the forest fires, the pandemics are going to be worse. That means that the world or the environment is not going to be a safer place even today. That means the children of my children and yours, they may have a tough life, a time to come. So we may maybe lead a, a good life right now, although we are already facing the impacts, but maybe our future generations are going to face it now. So the time is now. Climate action is now. Everything is now. If you want to reverse those negative impacts, the time is now. The time is not 2050. The time is not beyond 2030, but today. Yes. All right, all right. Oh, thank you so much for that. Even if just reminded me on the fact that like, already even we have seen changes in the world, like for example, in Kenya, we are used to, you know, there's this period is rainy season, this yes. period is cold season, this period is hot season. Yes. There's, like, there's, actually, let's say it's a confusion, like, nowadays we don't know yes. when rainy season is coming. Yes. You know, we don't know when, the, like, the last time, the time it was cold, the cold season was very long and it was very harsh. It was very harsh. Also, whenever it's hot, it's, it's quite abnormal than from what you are used to. Yes, because so, we are not having that uh, climate balance. Yeah. So you find maybe the hydrological system 
the movement of water from the surface of the earth and the, the, the water bodies to the atmosphere and coming back, it's getting interfered with. And it's because of the climate change and related issues, the pollution, anthropogenic activities like the human activities like industrialization. So all those things are bringing a climate imbalance. That's why you find a time the weather you are expecting is not the same weather that maybe you used to have to yesterday or tomorrow. So you find that all these, all these things are going to change because of the activities that we are doing. But if we do the actions that are promised, the actions that even the scientists have given us, and the basic thing here is to listen to the scientists, because these guys, they usually take their time, they study, they analyze, they research about it, and they give us the right information. So it's always important to listen to the scientists because they know what they are talking about. So conservation is not just all about trees and marine and all that, but also the aspect of climate. Because when climate is affected, then all these other components are as well going to be affected. So climate is a very sensitive topic today to discuss every time. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Thank you so much for joining me today to having this conversation about conservation of the environment. Yes. It's quite important, especially, you know, to create awareness to the people out there, to the set you are there. We need to take care of our environment as a people, both young and old, so that we can live a better life, we can live a good legacy even for our children, we can live a good environment for the future generation that's to come. Because, as you're saying right now, because everyone, to all our viewers, you can agree with us, there's been so much change that has been happening in the world and in our country, in our society. So we really need to have us to step up and take care of our environment, as Mr. Collins has told us what to do. And you thought there, if you've thought of trying to stand out or stand up for the environment, this is your chance, do it. Just have leap of faith and go for it, isn't that right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just have a leap of faith, go for it. And also to the young ones, you know, below 18 years, there's nothing like, oh, you're waiting for you to grow up, for you to do something amazing as this, no. You just go for it and do it. Thank you for joining us today, to our viewers. Thank you for giving us our, your time for us to discuss about environmental conservation. You can join us in the next time for another new segment of our episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and share our content. Be blessed and see you next time. Thank you.